Hey everybody, my name is Democracy, and today we're taking a look at just how tough the bosses of Bloodborne are. But I didn't rank these bosses alone. I pulled the community and we got over 300 total responses. Before we get into the bosses, let's give some quick honorable mentions to the Bloody Crow of Painhurst, the real boss of Bergenworth, and as one voter put it, those two shit whales in Hamlet. And now without further ado, this is the community's ranking of the Bloodborne boss difficulty. And so we kick our list off with the witches. Upon entering the area for the first time, you might think that the boss is this Tim Burton reject, but if you swing a quick left, you'll notice this moldy old crone in the corner. You kind of meander around the arena for a while until you realize two things. First, this boss seems to pose less of a threat than most enemies you faced up until this point. And second, these are probably the blindest and most disinterested enemies you'll encounter in the entire game. Really, this fight boils down to scouring the corners of the room to find the witches. Oh, that's right, I said witches. After you've killed the first one, a second health bar appears on the screen. At this point, the second witch gains some actual attacks, such as an AoE that I embarrassingly got hit by twice in this fight. But it's mostly a breeze dodging her attacks, and she'll be down before you know it. I should note if you don't kill her quickly, she can resurrect the first witch, but are you really worried at this point? As a quick tip, you can actually find the second witch before killing the first one. You can tell because when you attack the boss health bar doesn't decrease. If you whittle their health down evenly, you'll have to deal with the second phase attacks even less. And as a final nail in the easy coffin, if you use a hunter's mark to leave the fight and come back with zero insight, the Tim Burton monsters don't even show up, making this fight even more of a joke. I don't think there's any doubt that this is the easiest fight in Bloodborne. After conquering possibly the most terrifying place in the game, you'll come to this planetarium with a bunch of these blue jello heads. As you see the wave of goobers closing in on you, you might start to panic attack only to notice, hey, the health bar isn't going down. Hey, what are you doing back there? That's right, it's the Phalanx or Royal Rat Vanguard of Bloodborne, but with a twist. Just watch. Oh, well, thanks, that just makes you a bigger target. And just like that, the fight is over. In all seriousness, this boss fight is ridiculously easy. It's all just a matter of crowd control. You'll be best served kiting the group across the room, then rushing in to attack the boss. The only thing to really watch out for is backing off when they group up. Now, you can use the Shaman Bone Blade, an item which makes enemies turn on each other. I've heard of many people using this to great effect, but I died twice pathetically trying to pull this off, so I'll just stick with good old hack and slash. Ah, you always remember your first. This guy has probably one of the coolest entrances in the game. One minute you're just walking down a lonely bridge and then... Surprise, motherfucker! The first time I saw that, I audibly screamed. And then promptly switched to laughter after realizing what a pushover this guy is. You know, I think this boss was intended more as a learning tool than anything else. Because the golden rule for a large majority of big bosses in this game is this. Stick to dat booty. I mean it. Bob and weave hunters. First you pull off the juke, and then you spank that ass. Rinse and repeat, and he'll be bent over in no time. I will say that I always thought the Cleric Beast might be a lot tougher if he was scaled for endgame. I wonder if FromSoft had the same idea. Once you get over the nasty intro and appearance, this boss is mostly a pushover. If you're familiar with the Tower Knight from Demon Souls, the concept is similar here. Before you take on the boss, you'll want to run around killing these lovely ladies. Once they're dead, the fight becomes much simpler. Now get in between the boss's many feet and attack his... butt? And eventually you'll stagger him and can attack his head for bonus damage. But typically I keep hacking away at that probably booty because that's the golden rule. The only real threat he poses comes in three attacks. The AoE, which is pretty easy to dodge considering the long windup and audio cue the Acid Vomit, which can be seriously deadly if you don't run to the sides of the arena, and worst, the It's Raining Men attack. Literally, he will summon a blood cloud over you and make it rain bodies. This attack is also easy to dodge, but it's easy to get greedy and tank the hits. So just keep the greed in check and smack that booty for the win. Yay, more blue aliens. This boss is similar to the Shadows of Yarnum in that it's a gank, you're gonna get magic shot at you, and you need to use the environment effectively to win. 
If you go in with those expectations, this boss is pretty much a cakewalk. Probably the only challenge is that these things hit like a truck, especially in New Game Plus. One of the easiest ways to handle this fight is to focus on one of the four failures while keeping an eye on the rest of the ranged attacks. If you can do that and dodge effectively, you've got this one in the bag. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that hilarious attack they do when they're below 50% where they raise the roof and summon meteors. This would be frightening if it didn't come from the same direction every time. Oh, you failures just can't do anything right, can you? If you're ready to finally silence that annoying baby's crying, you're gonna have to take on the caretaker first. Which, considering this is the final fight before the end game, this fight is really easy. To be honest, I think this is one of the few bosses I've never died to, and that's for one reason. All you gotta do to win is follow that golden rule. The catch here is it's made even easier by the fact many of the nurses' moves are locked in once they begin. One such attack has her doing multiple hits for many seconds, but it's a long windup, so it's stupid easy to get behind her and just wail on her. The only real threat is if she spawns a clone and brings out the mist, but even then all you have to do is run in circles around the arena until the mist is gone and then finish her off. Not only is this boss super easy, but it's probably one of the only fights in Bloodborne I'd consider boring. Wow, time for the voted worst boss in Bloodborne. I would argue that the lore implications and dialogue of this fight is worth it the first time around, but on repeat runs, this guy can be a total troll. First, you gotta chase the guy until he decides to go in the first room. There you can fight him while he tries his damnedest to hit you with the auger. Oh, and he has these annoying, dodgy skeleton minions. Really though, as long as you don't get greedy and strafe effectively, the trip to half health is a breeze. Then you get to chase him through some mirrors, listen to him talk some more, and finally when you corner him, you can duke it out. He gains a sort of double punch move that is a joke to deal with, but his other new move, A Call Beyond, is the one to watch out for. If you're not careful, this move can one-shot you. The easiest way to handle that, though, is just staying close. In that case, he almost never uses the move. If you do that, you should kick this guy out of his nightmare in no time. Our first Chalice boss is the Undead Giant with the Ball and Chain. I decided to only include unique or notable chalice bosses, and this guy is notable for one thing. Once he enrages at 50%, he will follow up most attacks by swinging his ball and chain wildly. And oh my god, if you get hit by this attack. I ran the chalices on my overleveled as shit character to save some time, and he still almost one-shot me with my health bar the size of a football field. But if you play the fight safe and back off after every one or two hits, this guy's pretty easy. Really, he's just great at punishing the greedy, which gives him a decent spot on this list. The secret final boss of Bloodborne can't even crack the top half. Well, that's really no surprise considering how easy the fight is, especially coming after the one before it. Honestly, this boss is about as generic as they come in terms of moveset, especially considering how many large monsters you've fought up to this point. The only real threatening move of note is a blast that takes all but one of your HP, the caveat, though, is afterward the Moon Presence has to recharge, allowing you to regain tons of HP while just beating it down. As long as you can manage this move, you should take down your final Great One with ease. I gotta say, I'm pretty surprised to see old Skimflaps this low on the list. Not that I think he's particularly hard, but I've heard more than one person say the Blood Starved Beast was the reason they quit Bloodborne. Then again, those people probably didn't vote in a poll on a game they quit, so here we are. The Blood Beast can be made a trivial fight in one of two ways. One, strafe to the left. Once his attacks whiff, hit him a few times, rinse and repeat. Or two, parry. The parry timing can be a little tricky because you really have to wait until the last second, but once you have the timing down, this blood beast is a joke. The only thing of real consequence in this fight is the poison buildup, but as long as you're stocked with antidotes and use one of the aforementioned strategies, you should have no problem slaying this beast. After seeing these buggers on the walls around Yarnum, it was thrilling to see one suddenly drop in to fight you. Of course, due to its lanky nature, this boss has incredible reach. There are a couple different ways to fight this boss. The safe way is to get behind its tail and hit it. While this does pathetic damage compared to the arms or head, as long as you keep behind the tail, you can't be hit. 
Then when Amygdala inevitably jumps, just stand where the tail used to be. The head will land right where you're standing and you can just whack it once or twice and retreat back to the tail. The second option is to unlock and kind of wildly attack the arms. Not sure I recommend this strategy, but it's actually how I killed him the first time around. Lastly, and what I believe to be the best strategy, is to lock onto the head, bait the attacks, and punish. You'll notice when watching Amygdala that most of his moves have a really long recovery time. This is to let you get hits in on the weak points. So if you play the fight from a distance and dodge effectively, it'll be an easy and relatively safe fight. Dark Beast Parl is the best example of a mixed bag boss I can think of in Bloodborne. It boils down to two categories, those who have the damage to stagger easily and those that don't. If you can stagger him easily by hitting his leg and then keep knocking each leg down, this fight is an absolute joke. But if you can't stagger the beast, get ready to battle the camera and dodge, dodge, dodge. This beast is lightning fast and can be really tricky to dodge. If you want a tip, mine is to wait until you have at least a plus four weapon and are around level 35 to 40 before fighting Parl. If you do that, it shouldn't take you longer than 30 seconds to down this beast. The best example of a gank boss in Bloodborne, the shadows are more of a test of kiting and crowd control than anything else. There are three ring race, one that throws fireballs, one with a two-handed katana, and one that breathes fire. I always aim to take the two-handed katana guy down first, as he has the most health and is very dangerous. Once you get any of them down to 20% health, they grow snakes out of their head and get a more vicious moveset. By this time, hopefully the katana guy is nearly dead so you can finish him and focus on the fire breather. Once he's down, immediately head to the fire thrower and keep the assault going. If you give him too much time at this stage, he can summon massive snakes that will likely kill you. But he has the least health of the three and is a pretty easy kill, leaving you with a gang spank to be proud of. As the finale of the Static Chalice Dungeons, the Yarnum Queen is definitely a pushover compared to everything you had to fight to get to her. In the beginning of the fight, she just sprays blood at you in a few different ways, all pretty easy to dodge. What sucks is whenever you get close, that annoying baby crying starts, and if you don't move back in a few seconds, you'll be trapped for a moment. This is easy to avoid, but it can make this fight painfully long. Eventually, she'll pull out an actual weapon, which is great because she can be parried, and that'll help hurry on the fight a little bit. She'll also spawn clones and gain some new attacks, but truly, this fight is just about patience. As long as you play it safe and only attack when you have an open window, the queen is a pretty easy kill. Oh, Vicar, how I hated you in my first playthrough. You're looking at the boss I died to the most in my first playthrough. I believe this had mostly to do with my insistence on playing pretty passive. I was still so used to the Souls games where I could cower behind the safety of my shield and pick my hits. But whereas I had an easy time with Gascoigne using the music box and Molotovs, Amelia was just not the same. She absolutely punished me for keeping a distance, and I believe that's where many players struggle. However, once you know to play aggressively and stick like glue to that hairy ass, she becomes a much easier experience. Fire paper and a serrated weapon definitely help, as does a stock of numbing mist for her healing attack that will surely lead to a lot of smash controllers. At the end of the day, I love Amelia for forcing me to adopt a new playstyle that made me a much better player in Bloodborne and an even better player upon my return to the Souls games. So to honor you in death, Vicar, I salute you with a... Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed checking out the first half of Bloodborne's bosses with me. I appreciate you leaving a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe to see more Soulsborne content leading up to Dark Souls 3. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow in the second half of the list. Thank <laughs> you.